Okay, we're going to have a brief chat about uh, stenting for uh, malignant uh, colonic obstruction. Um, uh, just to say about indications, um, the uh, European and, and uh, ASG guidelines uh, make it pretty clear that uh, colonic stenting should only be uh, um, performed for patient with clinical colonic obstruction. Um, uh, not for patients who have got a bit of a tight stricture uh, on an endoscopy uh, but actually have no signs of obstruction. Uh, it's also a much bigger debate as to the, the setting, whether we should be uh, using stent as a bridge to surgery um, uh, in patients who have potentially surgically uh, curable disease, we probably shouldn't, but in the patient with metastatic disease and comorbidity who may be poor candidates for um, a stoma or surgery then I think stenting has an important role. Um, uh, scopes, um, uh, most uh, colonoscopes now uh, have a uh, 4.2 uh, millimeter uh, working channel which should allow the insertion of most uh, through the scope colonic stents. Um, in the past we were rather constrained in only being able to do use a uh, um, insert through the scope stents using a therapeutic gastroscope. That no longer should be the case. Um, uh, accessories. Um, there are two things you want to do with regards to uh, uh, stenting a colonic obstruction. Um, the uh, the the first is to uh, get a wire through the stricture and passing it as far as you like upstream. Um, and we usually use a 0.035 inch, uh, usually 450 centimeter long uh, guide wire. And you want to define the length of the stricture. Um, and so the combination uh, that uh, we would use uh, would be the wire and a large um, uh, ERCP, biliary extraction balloon, usually 12 to 18 millimeter uh, um, uh, yeah, inflation. Um, and clearly, when one is up to the stricture endoscopically, you are going to be able to define the distal uh, point of the stricture. But what the balloon allows you to do is go past over the wire, um, blow the balloon up and inject contrast, def uh, delineating one would expect dilated colon above, and one draws that back, uh, often getting a little bit of resistance um, at the proximal point of the stricture, and that allows you to define it. You then drop the balloon down, and as you draw the balloon catheter through the stricture, more contrast, and, and one would hope defining that stricture very nicely. Okay, now the most challenging, uh, two challenging bits of colonic stenting uh, number one, getting sometimes through the stricture uh, and getting a wire through. Uh, sometimes one needs to recognise that the actual uh, lumen is very eccentric. One needs to be very, very careful passing the wire uh, through a pinhole stricture. Um, do not drive the catheter or the balloon through. Lead very gently with the wire. These are often, if it's a primary colonic cancer, the, the tissue is often very soft. If one leads with the accessory rather than with the floppy tip of the wire, you can get false passages and even perforations. Um, sometimes we even need to use other accessories um, to uh, define and, and cannulate the lumen, sometimes even uh, ERCP sphincterotomes with, with bending the tip, but that's a, a, a more specialist issue. Um, so uh, two major considerations, the wire, uh, getting that through the stricture and secondly exactly where we deploy the stent and, and there's a few things to say about this one is the uh, is rectal tumors um, and uh, we need to be very conscious of not deploying the distal end of a stent too close to the dentate line uh, these are uncovered metal stents that are usually not removable certainly uh, if they've been in place for more than a week, they, they are almost no, no, never removable uh, endoscopically. And 
if the distal flange is too close to the dentate line, the risk is the patient gets very significant rectal pain, particularly when they sit down. Um, and so a rule of thumb is that if on initial rectal examination you can feel the distal end of the tumour, now people's fingers are different lengths, but broadly speaking, uh, if, if a tumour is, uh, if, the, if the, the, the stricture is within eight centimetres of the dentate line, uh, it is unlikely that you will safely be able to deploy um, uh, a canonic stent in that situation. The other area that we need to take uh, great account of uh, is the bends. Um, because, for example, let us suppose that this is the stricture. Um, if we put a wire across, if I deploy a short, say, six centimetre stent here, the risk is that that stent is deployed here and that it straightens out. Um, and that you then get flat valving of the uh, uh, the bowel above and so even though that stent is across the stricture it isn't functional and so as a general rule uh, unlike biliary stents colonic stents should often be a little bit longer than you think they need to be so I personally almost never use a six centimeter colonic stent in a case like this I will want to use a longer maybe even a 10 or even a 12 centimetre stent to take me around that corner and then there's much less chance of that stent straightening out and causing flat valving. Um, so I think colonic stenting can be one of the most therapeutically beneficial procedures that we do but as I hope I've shown you've got to get the rules right.